What's up guys? In this video, I will show you how you can use the AI Builder capabilities in your Power Apps and in Power Automate. We will learn how we can use what is available as an AI Builder. I will also talk through what has been changed or what are the new capabilities are available. So as you know, if we're going to learn, we're going to learn with a use case. So today's use case is, let's say I'm working or building an invoice processing solution in which I am receiving in invoice from different vendors. That invoice itself is a little complex. It has information about the company. It has multiple tables in it, which is telling me the number of orders that they have given and number of items that they have received or shipped. And the requirement is that whenever the vendor send me that invoice, I want to process that invoice, extract the data and save the data somewhere in SharePoint list. But I want to distribute that into multiple lists. So I want to have invoice into one document library, order details in one particular list, and detail about items that has been shipped into the third list, okay? So for that, I have already set up my SharePoint. I have a document library called invoice, and then I have a list for orders and the items. Okay, and I have different columns now from where these columns are coming in. So I have this sample invoice. Here I'm seeing the company name, the address, invoice number, invoice date, customer ID, some other bill to and ship to address. Then we have a table for all the order that this vendor or this company has provided and the individual item. So this is the, this is the sample invoice that we are going to work with. Okay, so without wasting any more minutes, let's jump into the actual work. Hello everyone, I'm Deepak Shivastav and welcome to my channel. And of course, if you have not yet subscribed, go ahead and click on the subscribe button and also the bell icon. Okay, so first thing first, we understood what we are building today, uh, the use case and all of that. To actually build it, jump onto the flow.microsoft.com. That's where we're going to start. And if you look at the left navigation here, you will see AI Builder. Click on that, and we are going to start with Build. So AI Builder is a premium feature. So either if you have the license to use that, that's great. If you don't, and if you want to explore the capabilities, what you can do, you can sign up for a trial like I did. So you will get a 30 day trial. You can extend it also. And then you can see all of different models are available for us to use. Entity extraction, form processing. This is what we're going to use today. Object detection and prediction. And there are many. We are going to use the form processing. So form processing is nothing but allowing us to process a form using AI. Click on that. As soon as you click, it's going to ask you for a name. So what you want to call this model. So we're going to call it invoice processor. Okay. Now, before you click on create, always look at the example. So it will just give you a quick walk through how this work. Also the best practice. So these are the best practice that Microsoft is saying or letting us know that we should be following these when we are using this model. Click create. And as soon as you click create, you will land up on this page where you can actually start working on your model. Now, this is the one thing that you may notice if you are working on AI in Power Platform earlier. Earlier, I mean to say a few months back. A few months back, before this recent update has been uh, published, we were 100% dependent on the model to predict or find the fields that we are looking for. So let's say if in my invoice, I have uh, 10 fields and let's say uh, one table, I was not able to, or I was not able to define what fields are exist in my invoice. Instead, I just used to give my template or the invoices to the AI builder. And if it is finding it, that's great. If it is not, then I have no option to just live with it. Now what you can do, and this is a very great improvement in the AI builder. Now you can define your fields, what you are actually trying to find in your invoices. 
So in this page, this is where you need to define your field. So I'm going to open the invoice that we have. So we have the company name here. That's what we need. So I'm going to say this is my company name. Okay. The next field that we need. Okay. Next, we need the address. Then we have invoice number, invoice date, and customer ID. So you can define any number of field that you are looking or you want to extract from this invoice. Not only fields, now you can also define your own tables. So you can say that how many tables be available in your invoice. So I can see there are two tables. So I can click on new tables. I can give a name. So this is my orders table. And in the table, I can define what all the different column that I'm looking for. So as you can see in this table, I have order, I have date, I have order number, I have sales rep and ship date, right? And similarly, you can uh, also define another table if you want. So this is my items table. And in this table, I have quantity, item, and all other fields you can define. So this is how easily you can define all these fields. Okay, so I defined all the fields. So I have company name, address, invoice number, invoice date, and all of these fields. And I also have both of my tables. Click next. Now you need to create a collection. Collection is nothing but a group of similar invoice that you want this model that you're creating to process and you can create up to 100 collection in one model the only thing you need to make sure that you are defining the fields and tables for those different type of invoices so let's say i'm creating this to process five different type of invoices so i will create five different collections and then i will define each and every field that i'm looking for in all of these different invoices and i will show you uh, how you can uh, discard if that particular field is not part of particular invoice okay so we're going to create one collection here you can name it i'm going to call it invoice one right and then for uh, for training this model you need minimum five invoices sample invoice they can be in jpg format png or pdf so what I'm going to do, I have already created sample invoice. So I'm going to just upload all of these here. Okay. So I uploaded five invoice sample. And the next thing that you need to do, you need to click on analyze. The analyze button is going to analyze these invoice that I have uploaded and predict those fields and tables that I have defined in the previous step. Okay. Click analyze. Now this is going to do their work. As you can see here saying we are analyzing your documents this may take a few minutes give it some time and let it work okay so as you can see it's completed now it's loading uh, these different samples that i have provided here right so this is what you are going to see after the analysis has been completed you will see all of your sample invoices that you uploaded with the red icon the red red uh, mark saying that you have not really mapped any field yet. Okay. And then you will also see all of your fields on the right hand side. Now, let's say you are working on multiple collections, right? And if you're working on multiple collections, that means you have different invoices also. So what you can do, number one, you need to do analysis for each collection. Okay. And once you do that and you feel like the company name is not part of this set of uh, invoices. So what you can do, you can actually click on these three dots and say not, not available in document or you can say not available in collection. So that, that way you can exclude the fields that is not part of a particular invoice completely. So you don't need to map that. Okay, just to let you know, so if you're working on multi-collection scenario. Now, how to map these fields to the invoice here what you need to do you need to just select that area or the field that you want and select the company name so as you can see here i just selected this area and i mark it as a company name again if you have used the ai builder before it was required to have each field as in key and value pair now you don't need to do, to do that because now you can select a particular field and map it to any field that you have already created before another really nice improvement here then we have a street address so i'm going to select the address here this is the address this is the bill too 
this is the ship to and then we have the invoice number here it's very straightforward just select the field and select mapping field here okay so this is the mapping for the, the fields now the table same way you can just select the entire table and once you select the entire table it knows that it's a table so it's telling me which table it, this is so this is my orders table and as soon as i select the order table now you can see all those different column that i have created and now what you can do you can select a particular cell here so this is my date cell and then you can map to the respective field in your table here right similarly order number this is my order number sales rep make sure that you are mapping all rows those are available in the table don't leave anything because if you do that then this model will think that it has to left maybe last row or one particular row and it will not map once you use it it will not work as expected so if i have three rows here i need to map all three so let me do that quickly okay so i i mapped all these rows and and column with my uh, with my table here click done similarly we're going to do for the second table that we have this is item so i'm going to select the items and then and of course i need to repeat it for all these fields so let me complete that okay so i mapped all these fields here click done and now you can see everything has been mapped and you can see a tick mark on this particular sample you have to repeat the same approach for all the remaining one okay so i mapped all the five invoices here as you can see all of them has completed with correct mapping click next and the last thing that you need to do you need to click on train train means you are training this model for these five invoices that we have created so that it can predict if you are going to upload a similar invoice generally it takes some time uh, maybe a few minutes based on the complexity of your invoice and once the training complete you will end up on this page where you can see all the different fields and you have an option to publish and before publish you can also do a quick test if you want so if you click on the quick test you can upload a sample invoice here and then see if your model is working as expected or not as you can see all of these fields are actually getting predicted so close that and click publish the publish is actually making it available for uh, power automate or power app wherever you want to use this one we are going to use this in power automate okay and now what you need to do uh, the model is ready as you can see here i'm going to log into flow.microsoft.com and then i'm going to create a new flow it's an automated flow and the trigger is when a file is created connect to your sharepoint site you need to get the file content so i'm going to do sharepoint get file content that's the action that we need to use again provide the site address in the file identifier i'm going to use just what i'm receiving from when a file is created identifier okay so this will give me the content so the next step that we need we need to go and find the ai builder so search for ai builder here and under ai builder we are looking for form so the process and save information from a form this is the model that we're gonna or the action that we are going to use select that then in the ai model you should see your model that you have just created after publish so this is the one that we have created called invoice pro then you need to select the type of form so we know that's a pdf document that we are uploading or going to upload and then here i'm going to say the file content okay so this step is going to uh, trigger the model give this content to the model and the model is going to run predict the field and this will give me the output of all the information or the fields and tables that we have so first thing that we need we need to update the file properties so now i'm going to use the update file properties here id is we know because we are just working on that file so that's the id and then you can see here as soon as i'm going to click on the company name on the left hand side i can see all the different information that i'm getting from the form and i can search for that so if i say company name and as you can see company name value and company name display name okay so i'm going to say company name value 
the invoice number again I can search for it and you have invoice number value similarly for the date right so this is how I can update the file so as soon as you're gonna upload the invoice I'm using this update file property to associate all the information from the invoice to that file not only this after I update the property what I'm going to do I'm going to use the another sharpened action so this time I'm going to do create item now what we are doing we are creating an item for each order in this invoice so first we need to create order here so I'm going to connect to my site again the list is going to be the orders in the invoice ID I'm going to use the ID of the file that I'm creating and in the title also I'm gonna just put the company name here order date right so in this case I'm gonna search for order here so order date value and as soon as I select that you know there is already applied to each edit because uh, the power automate knows that invoice has more than one order so it is looping through all of them and then I'm gonna type the order number here sales wrap right so we created the order and then I'm going to add another action here and this time I'm going to create an item for each item that I'm receiving in this uh, item table okay so very similar I'm going to select my SharePoint site list name this time is going to be order items the title I'm just going to keep the name of the invoice so that's the title okay and then for the quantity of course I can search my field here and you will get the quantity and I'm going to update uh, all these fields okay so I updated all the fields here now I'm going to save and we will test okay so now I'm going to upload more invoices and we will wait for flow to trigger process these invoices and then update all the three lists for us as you can see here the flow is running three flows instance are running in the SharePoint list as you can see all this information has been updated if I go to orders you can see the for three four five all the order detail also been extracted and hopefully in the order item as you can see here I have all the information extracted out from my invoices so this is very straightforward use of using these AI builder now you can also use the same AI builder in power app yeah so this is all for today guys I hope you will like and you will find this tutorial useful again don't forget to subscribe and click on the bell icon I'll see you next time. Thank you.